thirty-two dollars. You know, when I first when I first really offered another service to somebody, I was thinking about how much I needed to charge on an hourly basis. And I remember at the time I think I was making my job like sixty-four thousand dollars a year. And so I just took sixty-four thousand dollars divided by two thousand work hours in a year, and I came to thirty-two dollars an hour. And you know, it's sort of funny because before you've really owned a business and you you know how okay obviously you're not going to really charge or bill for that full year um you just don't know these things so you just kind of make decisions based on weird calculations and you don't really know that your math is right and so sixty four thousand dollars divided by two thousand hours in a year is thirty two dollars an hour so somebody asked me if i could help them out um you know how much would i charge and i said thirty two dollars an hour <laughs> And so, you know, I had also grown up in this sort of traditional accounting firm culture where everything's billed on the hour, and I don't even remember what they were charging, $250, $300 an hour, something like that, maybe more. And um, I didn't think much about it. I just thought, well, I'm obviously younger. I am obviously have less experience. Therefore, I need to charge a lower amount. And so, you know, years later, I ended up sort of learning so much about this, uh, you know, small business accounting culture that I now live in. And, um, I, you know, this whole concept of, uh, value pricing. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. It's almost like, um, you know, I was actually vegan for six years. And when you, whenever you attach to an idea that's uh, sort of like veganism, where it's it's so one sided, and you're you're into it. And I wasn't one of those people that was like, you know, uh, you know, throwing blood on people with fur coats or something like that. Uh, but I was into it for nutritional purposes, or at least that's what I thought. Now, when I think back, and I'm really honest with myself, I was it was kind of like a cult, you know, like you just read a book and you, you kind of bought into it, even though I'm not a scientist, like I certainly don't know that much about nutrition, but I bought into that book and I chose to believe it. And you know, it, it went on to um, really define so many things about myself and my identity. And I got to tell you, there is definitely a little bit of a cult around this whole fixed pricing thing in this accounting industry. And it's amazing how people are, are so attached to it. They're so you know addicted to it, and it's, they they define themselves and their whole business around why well, do value pricing and da 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 da. And you know. At first, I thought it was a totally interesting concept, and it and it is. I mean, it totally it obviously makes sense. You know, just billing by the hour versus billing a fixed fee based on the result. But I think it's gone a little bit too far. And I think you know what what I find is whenever somebody is so attached to something, and they're so engrossed in it, and they build their whole identity around it, I always wonder, you know, what are they not spending time on that that they could be, or what are they missing by being so uh, caught up in that, and. You know, I've probably talked to 5,500 different accounting firm owners, uh, you know, across the U.S. and 16 or 17 other countries, and the people that are super addicted and super into and super amazed and super attached to value pricing, they spend like 90% of their time talking about value pricing, value pricing, value pricing, value pricing, value pricing. It's just crazy, and they don't spend much of their time talking about value creation, right? How do you actually create value for someone? And the funny part is, is so many of these people that are doing value pricing, they're like value pricing services that. There's not really a lot of value in the first place. Like, you know, if you aren't providing a lot of value and then you learn to value price, well, that's not going to help you that much because you're not really providing any value in the first place. And then let's say, okay, you are providing value. Okay, then value pricing does make a lot of sense. But I think, you know, there's a there's a lot missing out there in this in this culture around what does it mean to actually provide value to clients. And the people that I've seen that are the most successful that are really growing the fastest, you know, um, able to charge the most, they're accountants that are actually making people money. Think about that. Accountants that are actually making people money. You know, for years, people think, well, accountants, do, they, do accountants really make people money? And, you know, I think one of the big challenges is that there are a lot of indirect ways, and a lot of accountants or people that are providing accounting services are not good at really, you know, explaining or uh, quantifying these indirect ways, but you also want to try to provide value in as many direct ways as possible. I mean, a great example, and I'll link below this video, a training that we put together for tax planning where, I mean, when you sit down with a business owner, if you can say, look, here's the thing. I know you worked with an existing CPA or accountant or tax preparer last year, and I know you, I know you paid him a thousand bucks to do the business return, but really you didn't. You paid him $15,550. It's just that, you know, $14,550 went to the IRS in overpayments. So, you know, if we were to work together this year, I'd be able to save you, I estimate, you know, just looking, just our conversation today, haven't even looked at your return, but based on going through deductions, legal entity structure, retirement, insurance, loopholes, tax cuts and jobs act updates on this call, everything we've talked about, I estimate I could save you X amount of dollars. Let's say it's $16,350, whatever it is. 
if you can tell people numbers, you know, and you might say, well, Andrew, that makes sense on the tax side, but what about on the uh, accounting side? I had a client I met years ago who really showed me an example of how, you know, doing, you know, accounting or CFO services, uh, you can end up making money for the clients. He was a guy working out of Nashville. His wife is a, dent or a dental hygienist. And um, this was the first example where I really started to understand this. And whenever he would sit down with a dentist, he would actually restructure the incentive plans for the hygienists. And now, obviously, he had a little bit of a bias given that his wife was a hygienist. I'm sure he wanted her to make more money. But he, he would restructure the incentive plans for the hygienists so that they would make more money if they recommended you know, more accurately the services that the patients needed. And what he found was that when he would set up this you know, incentive plan for the hygienists, sales of a dental practice would go up 15, 20%. So any, you know, if a dental practice was doing 100, a million a year in sales, they could do 1.2 million a year in sales by working with them. He's not doing the re reconciliations in the month and close. I mean, he's just setting up a new bonus and incentive and compensation structure for the, the team members of the firm. And so I think one of the things that's missing is, okay, value pricing, value pricing, value pricing, but what does it really mean to create value? How, what are the different ways in which we can not just value price the compliance services like cleanups and bookkeeping and tax prep that we're already doing, but how do we figure out and get creative on ways that we can actually make clients money and then from there, determine if value pricing makes sense. And to be honest, value pricing makes sense most of the time. I mean, there are, what I find though is you want to still leave that hourly option open. I'm going to give you an example. You know, so many people that I work with, when they work with a new, let's say they work with a new CFO client, but they're going to take on the reconciliations and the month end close. And say the old bookkeeper just left and, you know, left the, the, the books in tatters. So they go through the process of doing a cleanup. Well, when you first get a client, those of you that have experienced this, you never really know what you're getting into with a cleanup. Like you never really know like, okay, is this, you know, how much work is this really going to be? And so a lot of times what, what people, what I recommend that people do is they do a fixed fee. They do a value price fee up front for the, you know, amount of, for, for based on the number of months, based on the size of the company, based on what you would charge on a monthly basis. We have a calculation for that, but you qualify and you say, if we go over, if we go over, we'll bill hourly after that. Because there's no way to fully protect and know what you're getting into without going through multiple consultations. Even if you look at the QuickBooks file, oh, then there's new credit card accounts that weren't included. There's new bank accounts that weren't included. So there's no real way to do it. So I find that getting too attached in this sort of cult-like behavior around value pricing as opposed to keeping your options open. You know, I like to use all tools, all tools. I don't like to just stick to some tools and not use other tools. It's like playing golf with only a seven iron. Like, okay, you're gonna play golf with only a seven iron and we're gonna go up and I'm gonna take my whole bag and we're equal skill, who's gonna win? So if you're only allowed to use value pricing and you're not allowed to use all the tools that are available to you, it's gonna be difficult to win. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys. And um, you know, for those of you guys that have built your whole identity around value pricing and all this kind of stuff, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it. I just think that there's way too much of a focus on it. And if you spent 90% of your attention on figuring out how to actually make clients money and 10% of your attention on worrying about how to price it, I think you'd be a lot better off.